Hello, fictional. Welcome to the What If Issei. Today we are gonna see, What If Issei was the Hidden Dragon Leader. Part 6. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Issei took his spot between Azazel and Seraphil with Arena and Zenobia a few feet behind him, and that was the cue for the meeting to begin, now that the Red Dragon is here, I believe we can begin the meeting. First off, everyone here is aware that God is now dead. Azazel said calmly causing a solemn look to appear, that should be obvious. I believe that little piece of news is one of the reasons for this meeting. Issei said coldly. Everyone could tell that Issei was not happy and who could blame him under the circumstances. Why don't we have Rias go first with her perspective on what happened? Serzicha said calmly trying to keep the peace. The suggestion made Issei smile, I agree. Getting her perspective would be interesting. Issei said calmly. Internally he was chuckling since Rias did practically nothing during the whole thing. As Rias explained what happened, it was made painfully clear that Rias primary role was that of an overseer, and that most of the work was done by the Red Dragon, and she was only there because her position demanded she be. Thank you Rias. Serzicha said calmly once Rias finished trying to hide the annoyance that he felt. Rias was the overseer of Kuo, but she did virtually nothing of note during the mission. Might I ask a question of the Red Dragon Emperor? Michael asked calmly. Of course, what do you want to know Lord Michael? Issei replied trying to hold back his annoyance. According to Rhea's report, you drugged young Arena and Zenobia before the battle. Why would you do that when they were your allies, and in the case of young Arena a precious childhood friend? Issei was furious by the question no matter how logical it might be, and his killing intent started to leak. Fortunately for the group, Arena quickly calmed him down with a hand on his shoulder. Sorry about my little outburst, but I simply found your question to be rather hypocritical Lord Michael. Issei said coldly. That's a bold statement to say. You do realize that Michael is essentially the head of heaven now. Valerie chuckled. She understood his annoyance, but this wasn't really the time to air grievances. I'm aware of that Valerie, but before I answer I'd like to pose a question of my own to Lord Michael, but the other leaders can chime in, Issei said calmly. Of course Michael replied. If Kakabiel wanted to, he could destroy this entire town without batting an eyelash correct? Issei surmised. Not just him, Zetch's Mikey Sarah and I could all do it. In fact, each of the Mayu, all the Cadre and all of Michael Saras could. Azazel said nonchalantly. If that's the case, why the hell would he go out of his way to attack the churches and steal the Excalibur fragments in the first place? It was clear from the start that he was involved, and when he fled to Kuo, a town run by two devil heiresses, the church should have been on high alert. I adore Arena, and I've grown quite fond of Zenobia, but sending two relative novices to a town where a Cadre was hiding out was foolish and stupid. We're lucky that his role was playing backup to Valper, but this could have been a whole lot worse if they weren't smarter, Issei said coldly before staring at Michael. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were blaming Michael and the church for what happened. Serzich said with a very harsh tone. I'm not blaming him and the church per se, but it's rather ironic that the church asks so much of their warriors, but yet provides so little in return. Issei said bluntly. That's enough of this subject because it's taking us down a path that won't do us any good. Azazel said calmly trying to keep the peace. Issei wasn't wrong with his critique, but the cruel reality was that the church couldn't send somebody who was truly capable of stopping Kakabiel, due to it being devil territory. It was the same reason that he couldn't act himself even if he was aware of everything as well. Issei wasn't pleased that Azazel stopped it, but he understood why, Kakabiel claimed he wanted to start a war by killing Rias and Sona. Well that would have surely made the devils angry and riled up causes for war. Heaven would have stayed pat because the only people involved on their side were two exorcists. Exorcists that were sent on a suicide mission in the first place Issei explained. It was subtle, but Issei could tell the two siblings were not happy about that, but kept their calm. Since that was the case, the only way they could get heaven involved would be to reveal something to Irina and Zenobia that the church couldn't brush off. I drugged Irina and Zenobia because I believed that if they weren't around, Kakabiel's plan wouldn't work and he'd be forced into different actions. Issei explained. Well ultimately they showed up and now that leaves us with another problem entirely. Azazel said with a smile on his face. Which is Issei said with a raised eyebrow. Valerie may have told them about Azazel's suspicions, but it was Azazel's job to reveal them to the others. Azazel smiled since Issei didn't give it away, Kakabiel was never the type to take orders even from me. That means that for him to willingly work with Valper, even on a temporarily basis, suggests that there's a powerful force behind it. Azazel explained. Does this powerful force have a name? Issei replied. Yes, they're known as the Cow's Brigade. From what I've gathered the group contains remnants of the old Mayu faction, but that's it. Sadly, I can't say much more. Azazel revealed though Issei couldn't help but notice a cheeky smile coming from Valerie. I see and how did you discover this group Azazel? Serzich said nervously. 
Issei couldn't blame him since Azazel was clearly hiding something. Azazel sighed knowing that he could get in a lot of trouble for this because Valerie was once recruited by them. Azazel frowned causing everybody to look at her strangely. But the focus on her, Valerie frowned since it would do her no good to hide the truth. Everyone watched as Valerie unfurled a pair wings, but not the ones that came with her sacred gear. My real name is Valerie Lucifer, and I am an actual descendant of the real Lucifer through my grandfather Rizavim Livan Lucifer. Since I know you're wondering why I've got the power of the White Dragon Emperor, it's because my mother was human. When I was a child my father bullied me and tortured me because of my grandfather's hatred, which ultimately led to me leaving the underworld. I was alone for a few months before I eventually fled to the place where Azazel was staying. To my surprise instead of killing me or taking me back to the devils, Zaz adopted me and raised me as his daughter, keeping my true heritage a secret from most of the Grigori outside of the cadre. A few years ago, I decided to go on a journey to find myself, and it was during that time that I was recruited by the brigade and met what would later become my team. My peerage if you would. During that time, I discovered quite a bit about them, even though it was difficult to gain their trust due to my status. Valerie revealed to the group. The truth was Azazel sent her to act as a double agent, but they really didn't need to know that. It would cause too many problems if that was revealed. So how much do you know about the brigade? Serzichas wondered trying to hide his annoyance at the situation. I know that there are three major groups in the Cow's Brigade. The first is the group that works with the old Mao faction. I suspect this is the one that convinced Kakabiel to make his move, since the old Mao's plans would line up nicely with the warmonger's ideals. The second is known as the Hero faction. They are humans who are descendant from legendary heroes and have gathered together to make a group. Luckily for us, they're not going to be a threat for some time, since three of their major members are a part of my group. The final group won't be active for some time, but believe me when I say it's the most dangerous group. Who leads the final group? Seraphil said nervously. She had a bad feeling she knew the answer. Let me guess, it's led by dear old Granded. Issei interrupted. Valerie twitched slightly at Issei's sarcasm, but nodded, that's right. I don't know much about his forces, but I know that he won't act for some time. My grandfather is not the type to move recklessly and if anything, he'll act as a final boss of sorts, well that's good to know. Since we know what the threat is how about we? Serzicha started to explain before a large explosion came from the old school building. Asper. Rhea's panicked aware that her bishop was right near where the explosion occurred. The kid is fine. That explosion was probably from the person I have guarding him. Your little bishop will be fine. Valerie smiled. Rias breathed a sigh of relief, but before she could voice her concerns Zenovia shouted out, look outside. Everyone looked outside and what they saw was a large series of magic circles appearing in the sky and warriors coming out to face off with the forces Serzich's Michael and Azazel kept in wait. We're under attack Rias gasped. Yes, but we'll be fine. Even if by some crazy chance these guys get by our forces, we have all of us ready to go. Though I'm curious why they'd attack your bishop Ms. Gremory. Azazel said calmly. Rias was about to respond when Issei spoke up, it doesn't matter why. We should send somebody to back up Valerie's protector. Issei smiled. Who did you have in mind? Valerie smiled back thinking that Issei had a devious plan in place. How about Akeno and Zenovia run over and help out? They're strong and they can support Valerie's help. Issei smiled. What do you think Rias Valerie replied calmly but trying to hide her annoyance. That's fine. Go Akeno but be careful. Rias said nervously. Don't lose Zenovia. Issei smiled. Right the two girls nodded before sprinting out. No fair Issei Valerie pouted slightly causing Issei to smile and Rias to look at both with an odd expression on her face. She was about to speak up when a magic circle appeared in the room. We've got company Azazel smiled. Old school building. The Keno and Zenovia quickly arrived at the old school building with their weapons in hand. Zenovia's weapon of choice was her other weapon, Durandal is a uniquely shaped broadsword with a blue blade and a golden edge. The sword has a semicircular guard on the left side of the handle that extends to the bottom just above the pommel, with a small extension on the right side of the handle. Akeno was dressed in her battle outfit, a white and red Maiko dress, and her devil wings were out. So Zenobia should we get going? Akeno smiled. Of course. I do hope that the person who Valerie selected is strong. Zenobia wondered as they moved through the room. To the surprise of both women they found bodies all around and very little blood, but it was clear the people were dead or defeated. Clearly they are Akeno smiled as they arrived at the club room where Gaspar was held, and when they arrived Akeno's eyes widened at the women next to a terrified Gaspar. I wondered when they'd send me some backup. Sorry for taking care of everybody. A voice said with a smile before turning towards the girls at the door. It can't be. You're. Akeno stammered as she looked at the women in question. She had black hair with split bangs and hazel gold eyes, along with cat ears and two cat tails. Her outfit was a black kimono with a red interior yellow obi that was open to show off breasts that rivaled Akeno's. 
You know her, Keno? Zenobia said in confusion. I do. Her name is Kuroka, and she happens to be the older sister of our dear Kaneko. Kuroka wasn't happy at her past being brought up, but she kept her cool, I assume they sent you two to make sure we're okay. Kuroka smiled keeping her cool. That's right, but if I had known you were watching him, I would have stayed myself. You have no idea the harm you did to Kaneko. Akeno scowled. Kuroka's eyes narrowed for a moment, I know exactly what I did to Shirin. There's a lot more to that story than you know. Kuroka yelled back. Enough. Zenovia yelled stopping the two before things got ugly. We have to focus on making sure everybody is okay. You can discuss the past later. The two girls looked at each other before turning away from each other and huffing. Fine Akeno scowled. The small piece was brokered, but it quickly faded due to a large explosion from the meeting room. What was that Zenovia said nervously and as she looked towards the meeting hall to find found Azazel flying in the sky. You girls go back them up. I'll stay here. Kuroka confirmed. She wanted to help, but now wasn't the time to see her sister. Bride Akeno nodded and the two girls ran back to the conference room wondering what they missed. Ten minutes ago, out of the magic circle came a single person. It was a woman who appeared to be in her mid-forties with tan skin purple eyes and brown hair tied into a bun that was held together by a headset. She was wearing a low-cut purple dress that had a slit and showed off her sizable breasts and gold bracelets along with a staff, hello everyone. I hope you don't mind if I crash the party. The woman said with a bittersweet smile on her face. Ateria what are you doing here? Seraphil frowned. I'm here to destroy you and claim my place as the true leviathan Seraphil. The now named Kateria spoke up. Well then you're doing a pretty shitty job of it. Issei spoke up causing everyone to look at him like he was crazy. What was that Kateria scowled staring straight at Issei. Issei eyed the women briefly before a look of boredom appeared on his face. Considering what you've already done it's obvious that your plan was to use the time-stopping abilities of Rhea's bishop to freeze most of us besides the Mao and fight them in a situation where you have hostages to distract them. How does that prove anything other than the fact you're a coward? You little bastard. Who do you think you are? Kateria yelled. Issei Haidu, the Red Dragon Emperor pleasure to meet you. Issei replied sarcastically before giving a short bow. Anyway, if you want to prove that you're the better Leviathan than Seraphil here, your best bet would be to beat her in her own game. The whole magical girl thing she has going for her. Why would I reduce myself to wearing such an outfit? It's degrading to a devil of my stature. Kateria scowled as though the thought was ridiculous. A vicious smile appeared on Issei's face, and he decided to have a bit of fun. Well, ignoring the fact Seraphil is a devil of your stature, it was a bad idea, since you couldn't pull it off even if you tried. What was that Kateria scowled? Seraphil looks like she could pass for a college kid about to go to her first job interview with her appearance. Meanwhile, you look like somebody's aunt who dresses like she's 20 when she's pushing 50. You'd have no chance of surpassing Seraphil, so I can see why you wouldn't try. Why you? Kateria yelled before taking a breath, realizing that she was being taunted. Realizing that, Kateria decided to fight back in a different way. Everyone watched as a magic circle appeared below Kateria, and while most of the group braced for an attack, Issei stayed calm. It turned out to be the right decision because a light appeared around Kateria, and when it faded, there was quite the surprise waiting for him. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Valerie face palmed. Nice Azazel smiled. Oh my Michael said in almost abject shock. The reason for the disbelief from the three men was that Kateria now looked like she was around 20, with her brown hair and a ponytail of her own, and her glasses replaced with contacts. To make the scene more surreal Kateria's outfit was a dark black skirt with a black crop top that showed an incredibly toned stomach. Red gloves with black accents along with red stockings and a red hat. And? Basically, it's Seraphil's milky spiral costume, with black and red, replacing the pink and black on Seraphil's with Kateria looking like a Kumi Mito from Shakijeki no Soma, but with a ponytail instead of a bob cut. So, who's the better Leviathan now? Kateria said in a voice that was bursting with youthful energy. Unfair, I want to dress like that too. Seraphil pouted before transforming into her own outfit. Issei was admittedly caught off guard since both women looked gorgeous, gotta admit it's a much harder decision than I thought it would be. So, gents what do you think? Issei smiled before looking towards Azazel Serzich's and Michael. You're seriously going to have them vote? Kateria said in shock. Why not I mean you went all out to show us what you look like. A vote makes perfect sense. Issei chuckled. He's right you know. Getting the fans opinion is always fun Seraphil smiled. The men were stunned and admittedly didn't know what to think. Naturally Azazel spoke up first, hate to say it, but I'm going with Kateria on this one. Sarah looks good, but the contrast between the black and red along with the tan skin is really sexy. Azazel admitted causing Kateria to smile and Seraphil to frown. I'm going to abstain. Michael said bashfully since he didn't feel comfortable answering. Serzich's was rather uncomfortable before saying, I'll choose Seraphil. 
The two women were even but he would have hell to pay from Seraphol if he chose her rival. Looks like the last vote goes to you Red Dragon, so which one wins? Kateria said smugly aware that the young man had been slack-jawed by her new appearance. Everyone looked at Issei wondering what he was going to do before the young man spoke up, hate to say it, but it's a draw. Seraphol makes the magical girl outfit look good that's for damn sure, but Azazel got it right with the contrast looking good on you. I can't choose Issei shrugged. Kateria was furious at him because despite going through all of that she still couldn't win. That's enough. Let's just go back to fighting Kateria growled before another magic circle appeared and she was back to her old appearance. If we're fighting mind if I be your opponent. Azazel smiled. Don't get distracted by her tits old man. Valerie spoke up causing Azazel to twitch. When it comes to battling, I'm a professional Valerie. Azazel retorted. Enough Kateria scowled and she blasted a hole in the wall and flew out with Azazel not far behind. Luckily for them the battling outside had pretty much stopped, so they had the battlefield all to themselves. The group watched as Azazel danced around the battlefield, dodging every one of Kateria's attacks. Looks like their even Issei chuckled. The old man is just toying with her. He could easily kill her if he wanted to. Valerie frowned. Stop moving around old man. Kateria said angrily. Oh come on I'm not that old. Azazel replied with a frown. He was enjoying the battle, but he knew that he should wrap things up before they become too troublesome. Kateria was furious that Azazel kept smiling, but then she came up with an idea, try this on for size. Kateria smiled before a magic circle appeared from underneath her. When the light shone around Kateria once again, the group was in for another surprise. I blame you for this Issei Valerie deadpanned. I'm perfectly okay with that Issei said with a smile on his face. Oh come on Seraphol pouted. The reason for the group's surprise this time was that, not only was Kateria back in her younger appearance, but she was wearing a simple black bikini top that strained her massive breasts with a red bottom that hugged her body amazingly. To say she was erotic was an understatement. Am Azazel admitted getting a slight nosebleed and that proved to be a perfect distraction. I got you Kateria smiled turning her right arm into a tentacle which she used to grab Azazel's arm, what's that going to do? Azazel smirked nonchalantly. I can't win that much is obvious, and retreating without doing anything would shame the leviathan name. Those tentacles around your arm are indestructible, so I'm going to self-destruct and kill you. Kateria smiled. Oh boy Issei frowned. Amid Azazel, do something Valerie said in desperation. Why do all the cute ones have to be evil? Azazel frowned before making a light spear and using it to chop of his arm as it flew to the ground. But the Kateria said in shock and Azazel used the opening to fire his own light spear right at Kateria's head, killing her instantly. That was close Rhea said with relief in her voice. Unseen by most was Issei grabbing Azazel's fallen arm and sealing it into storage so Azazel could take care of that after he was done. That was close Azazel frowned just to have a dragon shot hit him in the stomach, causing him to fall to the ground. That was for being so reckless. If you hadn't been so focused on her body, she might have killed you Zaz Valerie pouted. Azazel got up and dusted himself off before saying, I deserve that, and everyone chuckled at Azazel's expense. Don't worry Valerie, I got his arm and Asia can heal him later. Issei smiled. Thank you Issei Valerie smiled as the wild battle came to an end. But the cow's brigade pushed away, the three faction leaders took the time to relax and fix all the damage that was done. Issei unsealed Azazel's arm and Asia was able to heal his arm with no problem, so the fallen angel leader was fine. Michael Serzich's and Seraphol helped to repair the buildings, along with sending the various troops back to their locations. Once that was over it was time to right a few wrongs before everyone went their separate ways. The first to speak was Michael who finally decided to reply to Issei's accusation from earlier, well he may have been slightly misguided, the Red Dragon Emperor is correct that heaven bears plenty of responsibility into the way things have played out. When my father died, I was forced to take over the system he created, but I simply could not do all the things he did. As a result, we had to take certain precautions to ensure that our followers didn't realize God was dead. One of those was hiding the death of God from nearly everyone outside of our most trusted. Miss Shidu your father was one of those men. Admittedly there were many times he begged us to allow you to learn the truth because he knew how it would impact you should you ever discover or lie, but we force him to keep it secret. I do apologize for that much, I see Irina said solemnly. I confess I also owe Ms. Argento an apology as well. Me? Asia exclaimed not expecting to be put on the spot. Yes I do. What happened to you was horrible and you didn't deserve your fate. However, we had no choice because we couldn't have people learn that God's blessings affected devils. I truly apologize for that, I see Asia said solemnly. Don't act like you're the only one at fault here Mikey. We all messed up. Azazel said calmly knowing he was to blame as well. Azazel Michael said in shock. The Kabil was a major threat for a long time that needed to be put down, and I knew it was only a matter of time until he tried to pull something. 
I didn't act because I was afraid that I'd get my own version of the old Mao faction if I didn't let it go. Maybe if I had done something, he wouldn't have told these guys the truth and this would have been avoided. As Azul Serzic has said calmly trying to stop the man. They all deserved some blame for letting things get this bad and the old Mao faction still existing was a devil problem. It's fine Zeches. I've done plenty of things that I've regretted and it's hurt many people and it's time I correct some of that Azizel admitted. Issei didn't miss the look he sent towards Akeno when he said that which it gave Issei even more questions. Mistakes have been made by all parties as far as I'm concerned. We've let this cold war that existed for many years go on and now it's time for a true change. With this peace agreement all can be settled and we can move towards the future. Serzich is acknowledged. Right. As long as Sotan is safe that's all that matters and if it means making peace. I'm all for it. Seraphil smiled. But grief sis. Sona groaned. She hated being put on the spot, but she was glad her sister was looking out for her. So how about we make peace and start over? Because the cow's brigade will be back and they won't be as easy to beat as they were this time. Azizel smiled. Yeah. The room shouted with joy. They needed to make peace because the cow's brigade would be back and there was no telling what type of threat they would bring. The next day, everyone was back at the orc with smiles on their faces, since things seemed to be moving forward. Well Issei I have news for you. Rhea said calmly. What's up Issei said nonchalantly. During summer break, Sona and me along with our respective peerages will be returning to the underworld to show our families our new peerage members and get updated on other devil matters. That's fine, but that has nothing to do with me. Issei replied dismissively. Sure, he would miss you me and Carloman, but that was it. Actually, it does involve you Issei. Near the end of the break, there will be a meeting that takes place in the devil capital, and we would really appreciate it if you would attend. Rhea's revealed to Issei's annoyance. In other words, I've got about a month and a half to myself before I'm dragged into devil issues yet again. Issei groaned. Pretty much. The truth is that they're going to gather the youth devils for a massive meeting, and the Mayu want you to meet them. Valerie smirked. Sounds about right. The Kendo Club has a month-long summer camp coming, and I'm sure they want their manager to be available for that. To make things easier for all parties involved, I'll come to the underworld after it's over Issei explained. Maybe we should start calling you the perverted dragon emperor instead of the red dragon emperor. Valerie teased. Maybe so, but considering how long you've been trying to sleep with me, maybe we should come up with a title for you. Issei retorted causing most of the room to blush particularly Valerie. Can you guys flirt later? We're talking business. Yumi exclaimed. My bad Issei smirked before moving over to the Grimmery Knight and kissing her on the cheek. Really Issei? Irina deadpanned. Rhea's coughed in annoyance returning the focus to her, anyway Issei, the point is that we won't see you for a while. Keep Kuo safe while we're gone. Yeah yeah, but Valerie is a much bigger concern than I am. What's that supposed to mean Valerie deadpanned? Let's start with the fact that you used to work for the guys we're all trying to stop. They'll be targeting you as much as anybody Issei smirked. That and you want to prove yourself to me. Issei smiled. I hate you Valerie pouted since he was right in a backwards way. The cow's brigade would target her in due time, and the revelation that she worked with them was not going to play well. Whatever Issei smiled. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you to enjoy your time without us, and I'll see you when the summer camp is over. Rhea smiled. Like that the small meeting came to an end, and everyone's focus turned towards what was going to be a fascinating summer. Summer vacation begins and things get very interesting. The sun was shining, it was a beautiful day out, and a smiling Issei Haidu sat and watched a kendo club girl swim laps in a large pool dressed in various bikinis while he got a blowjob from a bikini-clad arena in Zenobia. It was summer break for Kuo Academy, and while Rias and Sona went to the underworld to visit their families, Issei was in Hokkaido, relaxing at the beachside villa that belonged to Caddis's aunt. Her parents were absent all the time, but her aunt made up for it by spoiling Caddis rotten. Thanks to that, it was a simple task for Caddis to borrow her aunt's beachside villa for a month, even though Issei was going to be here also. Caddis's aunt would check in once a week, but for the most part the girls would be alone with Issei, and that's how they liked it. What they didn't like was that Arena and Zenovia were there as well having been brought by Issei, so the girls could work on the dragonic traits they got when he made them demi-dragons. Of course the kendo club had no idea about that, and Issei intended to keep it that way. The first training exercise was to split the ten girls amongst Arena and Zenovia and have them face off against the former exorcists in a kendo match. To the girls' shock, Zenovia and Arena won every match, and as punishment he had the kendo club girls do 20 laps. Adding insult to injury, Arena and Zenovia gave him a blowjob while the girls did lap something that was amusingly hard to ignore. Deep going girls Issei smiled speaking to the girls still swimming and the two on his rod at the same time. And them Caddis cursed having finished her laps already and being drawn to the side of them playing with Issei. Don't get angry Caddis. Just get better. 
Issei smirked causing her to twitch more since she forgot about Issei's incredible hearing. One by one, the girls of the kendo club finished their laps, and as a weird twist of fate, Issei erupted onto the two girls in front of him, just as the final girl hit the wall. That was impressive Issei. Irina smiled licking up the seed. Thanks but I need to have a chat with the girls for a bit. Why don't you go swimming to clean up? Issei smiled. Fine by us. Irina smirked before getting up and going towards the pool. Once Irina and Zenovia were gone, the kendo club girls walked over to Issei who pulled up his trunks much to the girls' annoyance. So what's up Issei Murayama wondered, deciding to focus less on the fact he was getting a blowjob a minute ago and more on what he wanted from them. Ever since I became manager. Most of the time has been spent having as much fun with you girls as I could. However, that's going to change when we return from break. Issei said calmly causing quite a few frowns to appear on the girls' faces. I never thought I'd see the day that Issei Haidu got tired of his harem. Weren't you talking all the time about how you'd be harem king with your buddies before you came to us? Murayama teased hiding her growing annoyance. I'm not tired of you girls at all. However things have changed, and I've decided that I'll be stepping down from my position as kendo club manager once this camp is over. Issei announced to the girl's shock. Did he love sex and everything that came with it? Yes. However, he cared about the girls enough to know that it was only a matter of time until somebody targeted them. Instead of being outraged, the girls all looked at each other before nodding, as though a massive conversation had taken place, how about a deal Issei? Murayama said calmly. I'm listening. Issei replied. On the last day of camp how about we face off with Arena and Zenovia again? If half of us win you stay on as our manager. Murayama replied. The girls were certain that the reason he was leaving was due to the fact Arena and Zenovia had beaten them so soundly. The fact he clearly slept with them also didn't help matters. Issei was about to turn them down, but received an amusing interruption, so you think that in a month you can get strong enough to beat me or Zenobia? Irina smiled. Rather ironically, the girl's concern was half right, and Irina figured this was a chance for them to prove to Issei they were worthy. That's right. You may have caught us off guard this time because we didn't know what to expect, but we'll win next time. Kata said defiantly. Very well then girls you have a deal. To make things more interesting I'll do most of the shopping and cooking duties which will allow you girls to train how you want. Along with the occasional motivation on what you'll be missing out on should you fail Issei smiled. A part of Issei was annoyed the girls didn't just let him go, but another part appreciated their devotion, despite the dubious circumstances that led him to them. Sounds good manager Murayama smiled with the rest of the club, nodding their approval of the deal. The next few days were easy for Issei as he watched the girls train intensely to prepare for the rematch with Zenovia and Arena. Issei had to step in after the third day since training into the ground wouldn't do them any good and ordered the girls to go to the beach for a day. Something they agreed on as long as he joined them, I don't know whether I should be annoyed with those girls for being so defiant or happy, but they want to keep it going. Issei chuckled as he relaxed on a beach towel with the girls' things gathered around him. You should be happy considering the stupid plan you came up with to protect the girls, Irina chuckled as she relaxed on a nearby beach chair. Irina's bathing suit of choice was a simple white bikini that had a half cup up top and a matching white bottom. If I stick around it's only a matter of time till the cow's brigade targets them. Issei frowned. Yes and ironically staying by their side is the smartest thing to do. Irina chided. Issei wanted to protect them by hiding them away, but they would still be targeted since it was one of his few exploitable weaknesses. Maybe so Issei frowned. It would seem he has a guest. I'm gonna go swim. I think our guest wants to speak to you in private. Irina said with a frown threatening to form having sensed the same person appear. Issei simply closed his eyes and relaxed for a moment until he heard a figure sit down on the chair that was previously occupied by his childhood friend, some people have all the luck don't they Issei? A female voice teased. Did you get it, Valerie Issei said with a slightly raised eyebrow and his eyes closed. Yes but if you don't open your eyes and tell me how I look, you won't be getting the information until you go to the underworld. I did buy this outfit just for you after all. Valerie teased before walking in front of Issei, not that he could see her. Issei fully opened his eyes to see what Valerie was wearing, and he wasn't disappointed. Valerie was wearing a silver top with a front zipper that currently hid her massive breasts and a black bikini bottom with her silver hair and a ponytail. It made for a pretty impressive look for the normally tomboyish Valerie. Not bad Issei smiled happily. Valerie smiled back as she unzipped the top revealing her massive breasts before putting her hand between the large mounds and taking out a flash drive that she gave to Issei, who quickly put it in his shorts. The kid's picture is in here. Valerie explained knowing he would do the rest. What do you want for it? Issei deadpanned. She agreed to help him but said it would be in exchange for something that she would decide on later. I'll tell you another time. It looks like your kendo girls just noticed me and I think some of them are coming back this way. Valerie smiled before leaving with a smile and a swing of her hips. 
Damn that girl. Issei mentally chuckled as the kendo club girl was returned to his side. While the kendo girl sent various complaints his way about why Issei was talking to other girls, Irina and Zenovia both gave him a glance that suggested they'd discuss the meeting later. He was lucky the girls didn't realize who it was or he would have even more irritating questions to deal with. The next day, the girls were back on the beach, but instead of having fun they were training. The whole team was in their gym outfits and doing drills on the beach instead of at the poolside villa. Issei had no idea why, but he wasn't about to complain. If I didn't know any better they're trying to show what you will be missing instead of the other way around. Irina smirked as she found herself sitting on the beach chair in a simple yellow t-shirt with a pair of blue shorts with Zenovia on the opposite side of Issei in a green t-shirt with blue shorts. Maybe so but it doesn't matter. You girls won't lose to them no matter how much training they do. Issei smiled back in his own beach chair in just some trunks. I'm still surprised you're actually leaving them. I thought the kendo club was your way to avoid dealing with the supernatural Zenovia said bluntly. It was, but recent events mean that I can't be too careful. Issei frowned. Is that why Valerie came by to see you yesterday? Irina deadpanned. Issei twitched slightly but stayed focused. No. Valerie came by because I asked her to use her old contacts to investigate the incident that got Asia kicked out of the church. I see and what did she discover Irina questioned having long been curious about that herself. Her information added nothing I didn't already suspect, but she did have a picture of the devil that Asia healed. Issei replied. Well it's a start Irina admitted. They couldn't confirm anything until he arrived at the underworld, but getting that would be a nice start. Yep there's nothing I can. Do. Issei paused again as he noticed something that made him twitch royally. Something that the other two girls next to him noticed as well. Hey Issei isn't that Kiryu and some blonde girl walking towards the kendo club. Zenobia said out of the blue before pointing to two figures coming towards the now relaxing kendo club. Admittedly Issei hadn't seen Aika Kiryu much since they changed classes, but when he had he was pleasantly surprised to see the girl abandon her pigtails and glasses in favor of contacts and long hair. The girl in question had the same gold color eyes as Kiryu and the same brunette hair, but Kiryu's went just past her shoulders instead of the ponytail this girl was currently sporting. He also saw that she was wearing a dark red bikini that looked pretty good, despite the fact the owner had low B-cup breasts. Well that girl does look very similar to Aika that isn't her. If I had to guess she was her twin sister. Issei replied with a smile. He heard rumors Kiryu had a twin that went to Nachizuri Prepatori, but he was never able to confirm them until now. I see Zenovia said calmly. Putting Kiryu aside, what the hell is Genevieve doing here? Issei frowned. Next to the mysterious twin was Genevieve Arcana, who once again decided to grace Issei with her presence. Genevieve was wearing a bikini herself with a white and red top and blue bottom, and while the outfit did show her body off nicely, Issei was far more focused on what she was doing instead of how she looked. That girl truly has a death wish doesn't she? Irina smiled having heard about Issei's various meetings with Genevieve. Yep and there's nothing we can do but hope that she leaves. Issei replied. Unfortunately, fate had other ideas, and Caddis walked towards him with the two girls in question. Issei barely held back a smile when he saw the look of nervousness on Genevieve's face and realized this wasn't her idea at all. Issei, mind if these two join us for lunch? Caddis smiled. I don't see why not. I recognize Genevieve from your kendo matches, but I've never met the other girl. Issei said calmly trying to hide his knowledge. My name is Mamiji Kiryu. My twin sister Aika goes to cool like you guys. We rented a beach house nearby, and when Genevieve recognized one of the girls from your school running along the edge of the beach, I figured we could go say hi. The now named Mamiji smiled. Pleasure to meet you. Well since we're going to have some guests for lunch I should get back and start preparing. Issei said calmly hoping that would be it. Oh why not stay and play? You look like you haven't left that chair since you arrived. Mamiji smiled reaching out to Issei before he put his hand up. I'm okay. Maybe I'll get some sun later on. Issei replied calmly trying to keep things civil. Your loss. It's not every day one guy gets to play with so many pretty girls in bikinis. I guess so Issei replied trying to hold back a snort as he got up from his chair. Considering he slept with every girl here besides Mimiji he didn't exactly care about playing with them. As he went back to the villa to prepare lunch, a part of him was starting to wish that he had gone to the underworld. The group sat down for lunch in the massive dining area that had two large tables. Issei Murayama Kadis Arena Zenovia Genevieve and Mamiji sat at the first table with the remaining members of the club taking the other. The girls loved the food from Issei, and as everyone sat down there was a good mood all around at least for a little bit, hey Issei has my sister ever used that weird dick trick of hers on you? Mamiji said bluntly catching Genevieve and the other girls off guard. Where the hell did that come from Mamiji? Genevieve exclaimed a blush forming on her face. Issei wasn't as caught off guard and he found it amusing, yes she has. Don't tell me you have a similar ability to hers, Issei replied. 
Liability involves intercourse also, but it's a lot more interesting. In my case, I can tell if a guy and a girl have had sex because of the unique pheromones they exude. Mamiji smiled causing most of the girls to do a spit take at the implications. How's that possible? Mireyama gasped trying to not choke on her drink. After all the entire club had sex with Issa, and seeing that exposed would not be good. Every person, no matter who it is, possesses a unique pheromone. Every time somebody has sex with another person their pheromones stay on their bodies and I can see the pheromones. Admittedly it's not as fun at a school like Nachizuri, but occasionally I get some gems. Mamiji revealed before looking at Issei calmly just for her face to go crimson, and for blood burst from her nose in an impressive nosebleed. Mamiji. Genevieve exclaimed rushing to her friend. What the hell? Murayama gasped. Something similar happened the one time Kiryu was foolish enough to try her little trick on me. So what did you see Mamiji? Issei questioned with a look of amusement in his eyes. Mamiji quickly gathered herself before staring at Issei with a look of awe on her face, I saw that you have a very healthy sex life Issei. In fact, the only person in this room that you haven't had sex with happens to be me. Mamiji replied dropping a hammer on the room. The room was silent for a moment until Kata spoke up, call me crazy, but you said the only person in the room that Issei hadn't had sex with was you right? Kata said with a twitch, hoping that it was some sick joke. That's right. I can sense pheromones from every girl in this room on Issei's body besides me. Is something wrong Mamiji questioned with a look of amusement on her face. Our club has sex with Issei a lot, so it was obvious that our pheromones were on him. The same cannot be said for your classmate Genevieve. Caddis replied with a cold fury threatening to form on her face as she turned towards the blonde. So Genevieve, when did you sleep with our manager? Caddis growled, I. Genevieve said bashfully not wanting to bring this up. Remember how Genevieve dragged me away for the screening before our match at Nachizuri. Issei smiled deciding to bury the girl in the proverbial sand. Issei. Genevieve exclaimed with a blush on her face, hoping he would stop right there. Yeah we do. I also remember you came back just fine and Genevieve never showed up. Oh I get it. Genevieve must have tried to seduce Issei, and it backfired badly. Karina smiled. Pretty much. She barely lasted a few minutes before fainting Issei replied. Of course their actual romp was much longer, but the girls didn't need to know that. Am it Issei, why did you tell them? Genevieve pouted the blush still on her face. It was a half-truth, but it was not something she wanted out in public. If that's the case why was she so scared earlier? I mean Issei's penis is a monster, but that shouldn't cause her to be afraid another of the kendo girls said. This one was had dark brown hair that framed her body with hazel eyes and a slim frame. What do you mean scared Murayama said out of nowhere. Normally she's so serious and impassive, but I noticed that she was sort of nervous as she walked towards us. When she turned and saw Issei I swore she paled for a second. The girl explained. Genevieve froze since this couldn't end well for her. Most of her excuses would be negated from the fact they already had sex. Amazingly enough it was Issei who saved her yet again, that's enough Ryoko, I was a little rough on her that day, so she probably had flashbacks of that. You guys know that I can get rough on occasion. Issei explained with a smile. Thought it Ryoko replied nervously since Issei's rough streaks were well known amongst the girls. Well that's enough about my sex life. Let's discuss something else. Issei said in a tone that said it was more than a suggestion. In that case, how about we discuss the fact that on our first night here this ass told us he was leaving as manager at the end of our little trip. Murayama smiled seemingly turning the screws on Issei. That's shocking. I mean you get to have sex with all these cute girls. Why would any guy want to leave? Mamiji replied. Recent circumstances have made me reevaluate the situation. Well I do adore the girls and the sex is awesome. I felt as though it would be best for the girls if I step away. Issei replied. Oh and when did you come to that decision Mamiji said calmly. I've been thinking about it for a month or so, but every time I considered bringing it up I was reminded by you girls what I'd be missing. Issei replied cheekily. That explains why you haven't been as into it as before. Murayama frowned. So wait a minute. You've been thinking about quitting for around a month and just recently decided to go through with it. Genevieve said in shock. If she remembered correctly the attack on Kuo was a month ago, so that would mean that. That's right. The girls don't need me for anything outside of motivation, so I figured it might be better for me to step away. Now if you don't mind I'm going to go do the dishes Issei said calmly. Why don't I help you Issei? I am a guest after all. Genevieve suggested. Absolutely not Issei replied coldly before leaving the group. Well that was harsh Mamiji noticed. Yes yes it was. Murayama replied with a narrowed eye. Issei was never that cold, and Genevieve clearly knew something that the Kuo girls did not. Nightfall arrived and Issei was relaxing on the sofa bed that had become his spot for the last few days. 
the girls were split between the three upstairs bedrooms, with Irina Zinovia Murayama and Cadiz taking one room with the other eight members splitting the other two. What a day Issei thought to himself. It took every ounce of willpower he had not to strangle Genevieve, and luckily he held on. Partner it looks like your day isn't quite over. Drake warned mentally as a figure approached him. Of course it wouldn't be that simple. Issei groaned as Murayama approached. Issei appreciated the short-sleeved pajama she was wearing, but he knew this wasn't the time for pleasure. To emphasize that point Murayama stayed five feet away from Issei. We need to have a little chat Issei, and I think you know about what. Murayama said sternly. I actually don't. Sleeping with Genevieve was a choice, and it's not as though I was exclusive to your club. Issei replied hoping to distract her. It's not about that, though I must admit I was annoyed by that, it's more about the real reason you're leaving us. Murayama said coldly. Though Issei said with intrigue. When I challenged you that day, it was with the understanding that it was between you and me. It might have ended with an orgy because the girls interfered, but it was okay because the hidden dragon was unleashed, and I took pride in knowing that I was the one who caused it. When you went after Yumi, I was a little surprised, but I didn't complain much since once again you came back to me and the club. Then Carloman transferred in and instantly she was as close to you as we were, and let's not even get into Arena and Zenobia's transfer. Murayama revealed as tears began to form on her face. Muri Issei said calmly, but as he moved towards her she spoke again. Stay right there Issei because something is wrong. Why are you so willing to leave us now when you've stayed around for so long? Murayama said angrily. Her tears and emotions kept flowing as she wondered what she and the others had done. At first, she thought it was because of their defeat, but the more she thought about it, the less she believed that. Issei wanted so bad to tell her, but he couldn't. I don't see the problem Murayama. We agreed that if you girls beat Arena and Zenobia I'll stay. Issei replied calmly reminding them of the agreement they made earlier. That's not good enough. But Issei replied in confusion. Murayama finally closed the distance and stood right in front of Issei, you're hiding something from us Issei, and even if you stay, there's no guarantee you might not think of leaving us again, Murayama said boldly. Is that so Issei smiled standing up so he was face to face with Murayama. That's right. You once called me your treasure Issei, and I still take some pride in that. It's time for me to remind you how valuable of a treasure I really am. Murayama said defiantly before pushing Issei back onto the bed. So that's how we're going to do it huh Issei smiled. Yeah Murayama said with a fire in her eyes that Issei had never seen before. Lemon start. Murayama pounced on Issei and slammed her lips against his trying to quickly take control of their encounter. She knew how good Issei was at this and she knew if he got his bearings she was in trouble. Just as Issei had done many times she slid her tongue against Issei's lips, and when he easily parted ways she attempted to dominate the kiss. To her surprise Issei allowed her to do so, and after a minute she pulled away with a trail of saliva to show her efforts. How was that Issei? Murayama said with pride on her face as she straddled Issei's hips, making sure to press her body against the shorts he was wearing to bed. To her surprise he was without boxers which in truth shouldn't have been that shocking considering the amount of sex he had. Not bad actually, but you'll need to do better than that if you really want to impress me, Issei chuckled before moving up to meet Murayama and kissing her on the cheek. Alright Murayama smiled before reaching for his shorts which she quickly pulled off exposing his prick and wrapping her lips around his shaft with practiced ease. Issei grunted as the brown-haired girl deep-throated his massive member taking almost 8 inches in before her gag reflex kicked in. Before Issei could react, Murayama bobbed her head up and down Issei's shaft in order to give the young man as much pleasure as possible. Keep going Murayama you're doing great. Issei smiled. It was impressive considering she never went that far before. Clearly their time together had improved her oral skills. Murayama smiled at Issei's approval and decided to give him more. We're just getting started Issei. Murayama boasted her pride grown by the minute. The brown-haired girl quickly tossed her pajama top to the side, revealing her braless breasts, and wrapped the large orbs around his massive prick, letting them take over. That's the stuff Issei smiled. He could have easily taken over, but Murayama wanted to prove herself and he would let her. As Murayama continued her ministrations, she pushed Issei around to when he thought her limit had arrived, but when his limit was nearly there Murayama stopped. I told you I was going to prove myself Issei and I'm far from done. Murayama smiled as she pulled away from Issei again in order to tease him. The brown-haired girl pulled off her pajama bottoms, revealing a crimson red pair of panties which she slowly slid down her body. She's good Issei smirked well aware that Murayama was trying to tease Issei and get him to overreact. Are you ready Issei? Murayama smirked as she straddled his still rock hard member and slid in from above moaning happily as they were finally connected. Not bad at all Muri. Issei smirked. How's this Issei? Murayama grunted as she began bouncing up and down his shaft at an impressive speed. Nice job Muri. Issei grunted enjoying the young woman's movements. She was doing so well that he wasn't going to stop her from showing off. 
Mireama couldn't help but frown at Issei's nonchalance and forced her body to move faster. I'm not done. Mireama grunted wanting to make Issei submit to her, but little by little her determination was wavering. Noticing as much Issei smiled and decided to finally take control pulling up to Mireama so they were face to face, that's enough Mire you've proven yourself. Issei smiled as he wrapped his arms around Mireama's waist and kissed her taking back control. Bam Mireama cursed as Issei began thrusting up pounding her body and little by little the control she thought she had was gone and Issei dominated her yet again. If it makes you feel better. You've proven yourself as my treasure and now it's time for me to take care of you. Issei smiled as he flipped their bodies around before moving Mireama to the middle of the bed. So you'll stay without the challenge Mireama said hopefully. I'll think about it, Issei smiled as he began hammering into Mireama's snatch. The young woman's moans of approval filling the room. Issei 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 Mireama cried out. You've done well Mireama now just let me do what I do best and make you feel good Issei smiled before gently rubbing Mireama's face with his right hand. Okay Mireama said submissively allowing Issei to take over and take over he did. As Issei continued to fuck Mireama the kendo vice captain was further reminded of just how much Issei had changed her and the other members of the club and she wouldn't let that get away. I'm cooming inside you Mireama. Issei said happily after 10 minutes showing Mireama that she had earned her reward. Cooming Mireama roared as Issei's seed rushed inside her. Lemon end, you've done well Mireama. Issei smiled as he fell onto the bed. Issei please don't leave us. Mireama said softly as she curled in next to him and shut her eyes, wanting to enjoy the warmth that he provided her even for a little bit longer. The smiling Issei grabbed the covers that were tossed to the side during their romp and pulled them over their intertwined bodies, I don't want to Muri, but in the end I may have to Issei said softly himself, before kissing Mureyama on the cheek and falling asleep as well. Things were going well for now, but with Genevieve around and the cow's brigade beginning to stir, there was no telling when his peaceful situation would come crashing around them. Issei's summer vacation takes a troublesome turn. Beach. As the sun rose on another day at the beach, a smiling Issei Haidu found himself running on the sand in a red t-shirt and black tracksuit bottoms, along with a pair of sneakers. As he enjoyed his run, he thought about the previous night with Mireyama and how determined she was for him to stay and how the other girls must feel, the girls really are something else huh? Issei smiled bitterly. She is but she had a point. Those girls are your treasure and dragons don't get rid of treasure easily. Sadly, you may have two in order to protect them from the true darkness of the supernatural world. Drag reminded him. Yeah I know Issei groaned. Mureyama and the club had become precious to him and he knew it, but they were normal girls and he simply couldn't allow them to get involved in everything he was. As his run came to an end, he saw a very familiar face waiting for him and not one that he was too thrilled to see. Good morning Issei Genevieve Arcana herself said with a smile. She was wearing a white tank top with blue shorts and a pair of sandals. You really do have a death wish don't you Genevieve? Issei groaned in annoyance. I don't, but I do feel like we need to talk Genevieve said calmly. She knew Issei wasn't a fan of hers, but she figured he would be willing to listen for the moment. Issei frowned before walking by Genevieve, I have nothing to talk to you about Genevieve Issei said coldly. I'd say the fact that you're quitting the kendo club because of me gives us something to discuss. Genevieve frowned. What was that? Issei said coldly. He was in a good mood and she was quickly souring it. You're leaving because the kendo club is a weakness that somebody in our world can exploit if they discover it. That much should have been obvious Genevieve said calmly. Yes and they're only a weakness because I had the unfortunate luck of running into you. Hell, I keep running into you even when I don't want to say said coldly. The current situation being another example. You certainly weren't complaining when you were fucking me right before my match the other day and as many times as you've threatened to kill me, I'm still alive. So, which is it to say are you going to kill me or not? Genevieve replied coldly. Don't test me Genevieve. Issei said coldly his sour mood and killing intent rising. Try me dragon boy. It's just you and me Genevieve said coldly as she got into her stance and prepared to summon her sacred gear. When she sensed Mureyama approach. At lost Genevieve. We'll finish this another time. Issei said coldly. Whatever Genevieve huffed before using a fair bit of speed to escape before Mureyama noticed her. Issei and Genevieve didn't agree on much, but exposing the supernatural was one thing neither truly wanted to do. Is everything okay Issei? Mureyama said nervously noticing Issei's annoyed expression. When she woke up he was gone and she was admittedly nervous, but a smiling arena appeared to tell her that he was on a morning run. Issei took a deep breath before looking at the worried girl. It's fine. I just had an intense morning run. Issei lied. Mureyama was skeptical, but realized there wasn't much she could do. Okay, let's go. The girls wanted to get some breakfast before Caddis's aunt gets here. Mureyama smiled. Sure Issei replied before they make their way back. He actually forgot about Caddis's aunt because of the mess yesterday, and he hoped it would serve as a nice distraction. 
Thank goodness for small favors Issei smiled as he and Arena made their way down to the beach. Katis's aunt decided to take the kendo club girls on a spa day, leaving him Arena and Zenobia alone. That gave him plenty of time for his own personal objective for the trip. Training the girls with their demi-dragon powers. Yeah. Now we can finally get some training done on our own. Irina smiled before summoning Hauteclear. She'd been wanting to use her new powers for some time, and they really didn't have a good chance to do so. It's about time. Those girls aren't good training partners. Zenobia mused before summoning Durandal. Well now we can really get going, Issei replied as he focused his power and prepared for an intense training session. Issei would admit that getting to have some quality time with Irina and Zenobia was a beautiful thing, but he was also disturbed by how long they were alone. Something's wrong Issei said nervously as he sat on the couch with Irina and Zenobia snuggled in his arms. It was nearly sundown and nobody was back despite the girls having left a little before 10 in the morning. The girls are having a spa day. From what I heard from others, those can last a while. Irina smiled before kissing him on the cheek to reassure him that nothing was wrong. Issei wanted to stay calm, but something was bothering him and he couldn't explain why. All of a sudden the door rang. Irina can you get that? Issei asked calmly not wanting to get up. That's fine, though I don't know why anybody would be ringing the doorbell. Irina said calmly as she got up to answer the doorbell. Moments later, Genevieve Arcana ran into the room with Irina next to her. This had better be good Genevieve. I'm having some quality time with my girls and you're interrupting it. Issei said with a hint of annoyance. Then I guess you don't want to know about a member of my organization taking Murayama and the other members of your club hostage. Genevieve revealed. That turned out to be a mistake, because in mere seconds Genevieve was against the wall with Issei's sacred gear out and wrapped around Genevieve's neck. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you where you stand. The only reason your organization would target any of them is because of something you said. Issei said with a look of pure rage on his face. Issei stop. She knew how pissed you'd be but came anyway. At least let her explain herself, Irina pleaded. Oh she was pissed also, but they needed information. Issei dropped Genevieve to the ground with a thud, causing the young woman to violently cough, damn it Issei do you have to be so rough. Genevieve gasped for air as she slowly got up. Where are they Issei said coldly. He wasn't in the mood for games. They're at my beach house. Genevieve replied just for Issei to punch her in the stomach with a brutal right that had her on the ground again and gasping for air. I must be hearing things Genevieve because I could have sworn I heard you said that the kidnapped girls are at your beach house. The one you rented with Mamiji Issei growled. Genevieve quickly gathered herself, well aware Issei might kill her for real this time, if she didn't tell Issei exactly what he wanted to know. The beach house where Mamiji and I are staying at is actually a property owned by my group, and an idiot from said group saw the girls in town. He knew about the club because while Murayama was your date to that stupid ass gala, I was forced to go with him. He grabbed them and brought them back to the house where I discovered what happened. I made a deal with him and as long as I bring you over, the girls will remain unharmed. For the record, Mamiji went home earlier so she has no idea. Genevieve explained. Issei was furious, but he could focus on the matter of how this happened later, it's time for some pain. Issei smiled as he got up from the couch ready to fight. Issei I'm coming with you. Irina insisted. Me too Zenobia added. Sure but I'm doing the fighting. It's me he wants and it's me he'll get. Issei smiled. For what it's worth, I'm sorry Genevieve said bashfully just to receive a brutal kick to the stomach, causing her to collapse on the ground again. You're forgiven. Issei said with a smile. Thanks a lot Genevieve coughed before struggling to her feet. Between Issei's attacks she definitely had a broken rib or two, but she'd manage for now. Issei made his way over to the house with a still stammering Genevieve right behind them and murder in his eyes. Luckily for Issei, the group was outside and the beach was clear of any interlopers. The sunset behind them made for quite the sight as well. I'm glad you could make it Red Dragon Emperor. Our group has great interest in you and I've decided to see why. A young man said with a calm smile on his face. The young man had with black hair tied into a bun, he also had a pair of shades and wearing a black Japanese school uniform. That's enough Kanya. You got your wish so let them go. Genevieve said angrily with Irina and Zenobia behind her. Ah but Genevieve I wanted the Red Dragon Emperor. I don't want these interlopers. The now named Kanya replied. Issei stepped forward with a murderous glare on his face, oh trust me you've got me and me alone. These two are only here to take the girls back. Issei smiled viciously. Excellent. Kanye replied, and Genevieve took that as her cue to free the girls. To the surprise of nobody the girls weren't exactly silent. Issei what the hell is going on here? Who is this guy and why can Genevieve create a cage of swords like she's a Manaim character? Murayama said angrily with the girls and what he assumed was Katis's aunt next to them. Issei silenced Murayama with a cold glare, right now you're going to go back with Irina and Zenobia. Meanwhile I'm going to teach my new friend here the meaning of pain. 
Issei said with a look of rage on his face like nothing the girls had seen before. Mureyama understood that Issei was about to fight and he's out for blood. Thus don't lose, Mureyama said with a bitter smile before turning to the girls. Come on girls let's go Mureyama said calmly as they slowly left with a very nervous arena, who noticed Issei's clear annoyance, and the same thing that Mureyama did with the rest of the club silent from his glare. It took around 20 minutes for the nervous girls to clear the area, and now it was time for the battle. You wanted me buddy. Well you got me and thanks to you I'm in a bad mood. Issei smiled viciously. Well now you're going to die Kanye replied before summoning an army of shadows. Issei looked at the young man and he couldn't help but chuckle, those shadows won't save you from me, Issei said coldly as he began to power up. Due to the lack of a barrier the area around them started shaking despite being on the sandy beach, and a pure crimson aura erupted from Issei's body. Oh hell Genevieve gasped realizing just how badly Kanya screwed up. Issei was furious, and Genevieve was forced to quickly erect a barrier to make sure nobody else interfered, and the damage was kept to the minimum. Mureyama POV. As we walked back to the villa, I couldn't help but curse at how such a great day had changed for the worse so quickly. We were on our way back from the spa when that freak appeared out of nowhere and grabbed us with freaking shadow monsters that blindfolded and gagged us. We were eventually freed, but we were stunned to see Genevieve with the guy who captured us. We couldn't hear them, but they were clearly arguing and when they walked back to us. We were brought outside before freeing us just for Genevieve to put us in a cage of blades. We couldn't say anything but watched as Genevieve left. What the hell is going on? Caddis exclaimed breaking me from my musing, and I realized what was going on. I could feel the ground shaking underneath us even though we were on sand which was insane. Look at that Ryoko said in disbelief having turned back towards Issei's location. Turning around all we saw was a crimson aura that appeared to be about where Issei was, but we couldn't see much more. The aura quickly faded, but we knew something crazy was about to go down. Clearly our manager has a lot of explaining to do. Caddis said bitterly. Talk later girls. We're getting out of here now Arena said sternly, and before we knew it a magic circle was underneath us. This was an insane night, and I had the feeling it was just the beginning. Battlefield, normal POV. Take this Kanya shouted before having the shadow creatures he summoned charge Issei. Pointless Issei scoffed before vanishing in a flash of speed. Where is he Kanya gasped not expecting him to be that fast. I'm right here, Issei smiled before appearing in front of him and punching him square in the ribs, bringing Kanya to his knees. Wakania coughed as he spit up blood from the brutal attack. I don't care how many shadow creatures you summon. They won't be enough to stop me from tearing you apart. Issei said coldly before sending him flying with a vicious right roundhouse kick to the stomach, sending him careening across the sand. Damn you Kania gasped struggling to get up, and his sacred gear was gone. Now comes the fun part for you my friend. Boosted gear Issei smiled before the stunned Kania could only watch as the legendary gear appeared. Issei he's finished stop this. Genevieve pleaded. She knew Issei was out for blood, and she needed to stop him before he really did kill Kanya. Shut up Genevieve or you'll be next after I'm done with him. Issei smiled as he aimed a bit of dragonic energy at the bottom part of Kanya's left arm, destroying it completely. A-H-H-H. Kanya screamed as blood poured from the now vanished arm. You kidnapped 11 people to get to me, and I'm going to punish you by blasting you 11 times. Get ready. Issei smiled. Boost. I think it's time for the top part of your arm. Issei smiled before blasting that as well. Kanya screamed once again and his torture was just beginning. Next went the bottom and top part of his right arm before he finished off right shoulder followed by the left shoulder. After that was the top and bottom of his right leg, and finally the top and bottom of his right leg. This is awful Genevieve said in shock. Never before had she seen such torture. Never before has she watched somebody inflict so much pain on another human being. This is what he gets Genevieve. Come after me all you want and I'll be your opponent, but those girls are off limits. The kendo club is just a group of normal girls who just wanted to spend a month with me. They had no business getting involved, and you will pay dearly for involving them, Issei said coldly. Boost. Now it was time for the final boost. So tell me Kanya, I've broken your ribs and blasted your arms and legs to shreds, leaving you a bloody broken mess. How shall I finish you off? Issei smiled. Spare me Kanya pleaded barely able to move because of the pain. Blood was pouring from his body, and he knew that he had no chance of surviving as it was. Issei smiled as he looked down on the beaten and broken man. No. You will serve as a lesson to those who would dare try something this stupid again. Those girls are off limits. Issei said coldly. Explosion. As the power exploded through his body Issei could only smile, dragon shot before the boosted shot slammed through his stomach, leaving a massive hole where his spine should be killing him instantly. Reset. Genevieve watched in horror as a smiling Issei turned towards her. What do you want from me? Genevieve said in terror. She had learned her lesson, and she could only pray that Issei's rage had been quelled. 
Issei simply smiled as he walked towards the terrified Genevieve cupping her face with his right hand. He smiled happily at the fear that was permeating from her body, since she knew what this would mean, tell your organization what I've done to your friend here, and make sure they know that what happened to him will pale in comparison to what I do to the next fool. As for the girls themselves, I was already planning to leave the kendo club before this happened, and this has reinforced my decision. I sincerely hope that this is our last meeting Genevieve because if we become enemies again, you may just find out what I can do with my balance breaker on, and trust me you won't like it. Issei smiled before letting go and walking away leaving a frozen Genevieve to wonder just what type of monster Issei Haidu really was. I hope this is our last meeting also Issei because you're only going to become more terrifying from here on out. Genevieve thought to herself. Issei arrived back at the house with a bittersweet smile on his face from a job well done. Opening the unlocked back door he walked into the living room, wondering what would be waiting for him. It ended up being a solemn Yureyama who he knew went through something she had no business going through. I won Issei smiled. I see. Mureyama replied before motioning for Issei to sit on the couch to her right, so his left arm was next to her. Issei did so and the brown-haired girl wrapped his left arm around her body. She recalled their conversation the night before about what he was hiding and now she knew. She knew why Issei wanted to leave, and admittedly she couldn't blame him. How much did Irina tell you? Issei wondered. Thanks to his outburst he knew the girls had at the very least felt his power. Irina would have probably moved the girls quickly knowing what was at stake if he went that hard. After we saw that crimson aura. Irina took us back home instantly using magic. Once we got back, she sat us down and explained everything. She told us that you three were human, but you had some sort of supernatural power on your left arm and that she and Zenobia were former exorcists. When I asked if it was draconic, she said yes and that explained so much. Murayama said solemnly. Issei smiled before summoning the boosted gear, making sure it didn't cut Murayama up in the process, this is the boosted gear and it's the power I hold. I discovered this power when I was a child and as you guessed it is the source of my dragonic instincts. Because of it, you were put in danger and because of it, I will be leaving my position as your manager effective immediately. The same Yureyama was about to say before he silenced her lips with a clawed finger. I was already planning to do so because I feared you girls would be put in danger and tonight was a great example of what I feared. I will not put you in danger again Yureyama. Issei said bitterly. He wanted to protect the girls and if that meant leaving them behind he would do so. There must be another way. Murayama wondered. There isn't Murayama. I'm going to pack my things tonight and that will be that. Will I miss you and the girls yes, but it is for your own good that I leave. Issei replied with a solemn expression on his face. Murayama looked at the expression on Issei's face and she knew that their time together had come to an end. The whole kendo club got dragged into a massive mess and it could have been a whole lot worse. If Genevieve didn't get involved, she had a feeling it would have been and then who knows what Issei would have done. I guess I'll see you at school. Murayama accepted knowing that this was it and there was nothing she could do. I don't know who you are, but you're not our manager. Caddis shouted having walked into the room. What the fuck Caddis? We agreed that only I'd talk to Issei when he got back. Murayama exclaimed. Yes we did, and that's because we figured you'd convince him to stay. Since that failed, we're stepping in Ryoko smiled. I mean can you blame us for getting involved? This is the same guy who stubbornly fraught against all of us with his bare hands, and once he had us beat, fucked us until we couldn't move. The guy who's had sex with us so many times we practically can't feel pleasure unless it's with that dick of his. Do you honestly think we're just gonna let him leave us that easily? Caddis said haughtily. Plus, you're the hidden dragon well I suppose now it's the red dragon based on what Arena told us. What sort of dragon gives up his treasure? Especially when he knows he can protect it. Corinna smiled. Corinna Issei smiled at the response since it's what Drake told him as well. That's right manager. We're your kendo club and if you're afraid of something happening to us. You'd better stick around and protect us yourself. Kata smiled before taking his right side with Karina and Ryoko, sitting by his left and right legs respectively preventing him from moving. Unfair. There's no room. Clarissa pouted clearly wanting to do the same things. You snooze you lose. Ryoko chuckled. Issei could only smile as he saw the faces of the girls and realized that he was making a mistake. I get it girls I'll stay on as your manager. You don't have to face off with Arena anymore, either Issei relented. He figured they would fear him, and that would be that. He clearly underestimated the girls in the club. Yay. The girls all cheered. Now everyone get to sleep. We've got training tomorrow, and I want to make sure you girls are ready when classes resume. Issei smiled. Yes, sir. The girls all smiled before making their way up to their rooms to relax. Issei took a moment to relax and take a deep breath after the day he's had. It all worked out, didn't it? Drake smiled deciding to speak out loud since the girls were gone. Yeah but we may not get so lucky next time. Issei frowned. 
The person they fought was a scrub, but next time he wouldn't be so lucky. He needed to keep them safe and making them dragons wasn't an option. That meant he had to make a call tomorrow, and hopefully he wouldn't get an earful because of it. Issei groaned as he sat in the house and relaxed deciding to let Arena and Zenobia take care of training for the day. With the cat out of the proverbial bag, the challenge was unnecessary, and the girls focused again on getting stronger. Well time to pay the piper Issei groaned as he reached for his phone in order to call Azazel. The phone rang for a few moments before the fallen angel leader picked up. I'm surprised you're calling me Issei. I hope everything's okay Azazel said with a smile. No, it's not. Are you alone right now? Issei questioned. Yes I am. So, what happened? Azazel wondered knowing that it couldn't be good news. The girls were attacked by the cow's brigade. Issei explained knowing Azazel would not be pleased. When were Azazel said nervously. Yesterday actually. A member of the hero faction saw them during a spa day with one of the girls' ants and captured them. When I found out what happened, I went to get the girls and beat the unholy hell out of the kidnapper. Issei revealed. I see and I assume they now know about the supernatural. Azazel wondered. Yes they do, but I've managed to keep the orc's involvement a secret for the moment. You realize that won't last very long. Azazel deadpanned. Yes I do, but I want to ask you a favor in the meantime. What's that Azazel replied with a smile on his face. There are ten girls on the team. I want you to make a necklace for each of them. And the necklace will contain a jewel that contains a summoning matrix in case of emergency. Why not make them dragons like Arena and Zenobia? Because they're still mostly human, and the cow's brigade are a major problem, and one that I can't solve if I have to focusing on getting them combat ready. Issei replied. I'll get on that soon, but it'll take me a few days. Send me their information so I can make sure it has everything you'll want Azazel replied. Thank you Issei replied. Of course. Azazel replied back with a smile on his face. At least now the girls would be protected once he left for the underworld. A few days later Issei left while the girls were out training in order to meet with Azazel. Needless to say it was a simple meeting, and a smiling Issei returned to the house with a bag of necklaces. The girls actually had a day off so he wasn't surprised to see Murayama and Cadis in the living room watching TV. Muri can you gather the girls for me? I have something to discuss with all of you. Issei revealed. I see Murayama replied before she nodded to Cadis. It took the two girls around 15 minutes to gather everyone. So what's up manager Clarissa wondered. Are we having another orgy? Corinna continued causing the girls to look at him with intrigue. Sadly, no. This is more business than pleasure Issei revealed to the girl's disappointment the other day you learned about the supernatural and about the fact that I am connected to it because of my sacred gear. What you weren't told is that people like that guy may appear again and I may not be around to protect you. Issei explained as he reached into his bag and pulled out a box. To remedy that, I called in a favor from and got you girls these. Issei smiled pulling out a necklace with a small pink jewel. Wow. Kata said in disbelief. I'm glad you like it Caddis because this one is for you. The jewel contains a matrix that will allow you girls to summon me in case of emergencies. So you girls know, the necklaces are identical aside from the jewel which was customized for each of you. Issei smiled. Awesome Caddis smiled and she walked over first as Issei put on the necklace on her. Mireyama Karina and Clarissa followed and before long each of the members had a necklace on. Now don't forget girls these are for emergencies only. No late night booty calls. Issei frowned causing a few chuckles. Speaking of supernatural, mind if I ask something? Murayama spoke up. Of course, is the orc connected to the supernatural as well? What makes you ask that? Issei wondered. Before the year started nobody knew a thing about the club outside of the fact it was super exclusive and that it was run by Ria's Gremory, now Arena Zenobia Asia and Carloman have been able to get in. Not to mention Gaspar Karina spoke up. Anyway, the only explanation I can think of is that the orc is some kind of supernatural front. Murayama questioned. Issei groaned because she figured it out far too easily for his taste, yes they are. Yumi and Carloman are both devils along with the remaining members of the orc. Issei replied. That makes so much sense Clarissa chuckled. Hum again Issei frowned. People always said that Ria's was too beautiful to be human. I guess that's why Clarissa revealed causing Issei to face fault. She is a beauty to be sure. Issei smiled. So Issei are you sleeping with Ria's as well? Corinna teased. Rather ironically no. Ria's and I have a platonic relationship Issei revealed hiding the fact that Ria's desperately wanted to change that. So you're saying, we've managed to charm a guy that one of the great ladies hasn't awesome. Ryoko smiled as the other girls chuckled. That's right, but unfortunately for you girls I'll be meeting with Ria's once I leave you guys. Recent events means that things are about to get very hectic. Issei revealed. Are those events related to what happened to us? Murayama wondered. Sorta kinda. The guy that attacked you and that worked with Genevieve is just a small fish in a massive supernatural pond. 
For now, you girls just need to focus on Kendo and leave the supernatural stuff to me. I will stress that everything you've learned is top secret and nobody can learn about it. It's why I was forced to erase the memories of Caddis's and to say smiled. Our lips are sealed as long as you're our manager. Murayama chuckled. Really Muri. I already agreed to stay on. Issei deadpanned. Hey a girl can't be too careful. Murayama smiled. That going girls Issei groaned and the girls scattered. For Issei it was a weight off his shoulders for sure, but the next few weeks went by in a flash and it was time for the second part of Issei's summer. That's it for chapter 18 and things are just getting fun. Next time Rhea's vacation leads to a few eye-opening revelations. End of the here. So that's it for today's video guys, before you go just like the video and share it with your friends. Bye.